and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be taking a look at some useful small modules provided to us by NIM. Now these modules are a little bit too small to have an entire video dedicated to them. So instead we dedicate one larger video to all of them. So let's get started with a couple of them. First off, how does one get the CPU info from the host's computer? Well, one way to do it is just to import CPU info from the standard library and then to echo out CPU info dot and then we can count the processors. As simple as that, we run it, we get four. That is true if I say H top, then zero, one, two, three, this is four, these are my CPUs. And uh, yeah, that's the only thing inside of CPU info at the moment. It will probably later on expand to hold more information or more functions that we can use. But in this case, I think count processors was the only one that's in here. Cool, next up, let's import from STD, CSTR utils. So this is to have like C styled string and stuff. So let's say var a is now a C string. So this is a C styled string. Nothing really changes, but now we can manipulate it like a C string, I believe. So if we just echo out a, we'll just get hello world, not, not h stop, my bad. We'll get hello world. But let's say we want to get starts with dot starts with and and this starts with actually comes from C string utils. So if we do this, then it works. Now, I don't really know what the difference is between a C string and a string. I believe it's most likely performance based if I had to take a wild guess. Or maybe it helps with the compilation from NIM to C because NIM can transpile down to C. And then you of course also have a bunch of functions you can use. Most of these we already know, but you also have things like is nil, uh, deallocate, deallocate implicit, I think. I don't really know a lot of C, but I believe a lot of these are C uh, functions that we can use. So it's up to you if you want to use a C related function to maybe have more control over your variable, your string, then you can use C string utils to accomplish that. Next up, let's take a look at str misc, so string miscellaneous. So let's echo str, or let's just go expand tabs. Hello world, I am very cool. Now, if you might have forgotten, backslash t basically means give us a tab. Now what this is going to do is it's going to lengthen the tabs. So it sets them to four spaces. If we were to just go like echo out a normal one, so echo a normal string of normal tabs. Now here we can just say four to make sure it goes to four spaces. So if we were to run this now, we'll have this. Hello world, I am very cool. So we'll try and indent with four always. So one, two, three, four, then it starts over. One, two, three, four. Then here's the new thing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four. There we go. One, two, one, two. So as you can see, it will always be four. Now you can of course make this more. So instead of four, we can go 10. Now it will be scary big, as you can see here. So you can use expand tabs to make tabs bigger. So be more spaces. You can also use partition. Now, if we go here and say bar colon int and then put a colon here, then it will return a tuple with three strings split by the first colon it finds. So let's go like this. So var and then it split it at the colon and then we get int. So of course, if we go colon again, var int var name or something like that. Then here we get var colon and then int colon var name. So only by the first one it finds. Now you can do the same 
to get the last one by going R partition, meaning reverse partition. So if we do that, then now it will be var name colon and then here's var int. Now let's import uni decode. Now sometimes when you work with text, you might get code that is not English. And let's translate to Chinese. I have no idea which what the difference is, and we just go here and say English, and let's just say China. There we go. We copy this. Now here we say you need decode, and boom. So sometimes let's say you, someone types Chinese into your app, and we just need to echo this, or someone types Japanese in here. So goodbye. That would be so nada. Where is Japanese? There we go. Just as an example, let's have two different languages, just so we know what we can expect. Okay, so now we have two different languages to test. Now, if we were to run this file and decode this Chinese and Japanese we get, we get sayonara and zonguo. Please excuse me if I butcher that. So basically, it's Google Translate. It will take this and it will convert it to its English counterparts. Not the English word itself, but the English counterparts. So it will convert it into normal letters, Latin letters. But not the English word itself, just the English letters. Cool. Next up, let's go word wrap. And let me just put a nice long string here. All right, so here I have a nice string. Hello, my name is Steve. I come from land far in the east called Shubalubagast, and it is a great place. Now we can just say word, uh, wrap words, of course, uh, wrap words, and we can import or put our string in there. Max line width, so this will make sure that the line width doesn't become too long. So line width is equal to 20. And then we can also say split long words, which is equal to true. So it will split long words up as well. And we just echo that as make the max line length equal to 20 characters. So if you run this, hello, my name is Steve. I come from a land far in the east called Shubalubagast. Now, if we were to make this maybe 10 and then run it, then hold Shubalubagist. So it will break it up in a sense like that, where it will split long words up into two. So that will allow you to wrap text. So if you don't want text to be longer than, let's say, 20 characters, so each sentence should only be 20 characters or less, then this is a great way to go about it. Now, sometimes you want to work with your Linux bros and you want to know what distro they use. So then you just go distros and then echo check OS or Detect over is my bad. And let's say we try man, Manjaro. Now, this will not be true because I do not run Manjaro. But if we run this, we'll get false. So I don't run Manjaro. In fact, I run Arch Linux, but specifically Endeavor OS. I don't know if we actually have. No, we don't have Endeavor. Arch Linux, we run that. And we get false as well. Most likely because I'm running Endeavor and it's not added here. But we can still check Linux, and this will specifically check if we are running Linux. It's true. You can also check for Windows, and we run that. It will be false. I'm not running Windows, and so on. You have Mac OS, POSIX, Ubuntu, Debian, Gentoo, Fedora, Red Hat, OpenSUSE, Elementary, Zorin, and the list goes on. You can even check if someone is running Steam OS, which is kind of neat. You can also go foreign foreign dip installed cmd and this will return the distro's native command line to install the specific software and if it requires pseudo privileges now take note just because a native installed tool is returned that doesn't mean that it's the one that that distro uses right now like if you're running Manjaro, it might return PKG, but PKG is for build packages, whilst it should actually use Pacman or return Pacman. So let's put Tmux here, which is a 
terminal multiplexer that you can install. If we run this, we get your package manager here, install tmux true. Okay, so it can't detect my package manager and it's most likely because I am on Endeavor OS, which isn't uh, detected by detect OS. So it could be because of that, but if you might get something like PKG install tmux, which isn't correct, it should be Pac-Man install tmux. And this will require pseudo privileges, as you can see, it's true. So this will not work on all distros, so you just need to make sure, but it will work on the most popular Linux distros you're running on. And it will probably work on Windows if we're lucky as well, I have no idea. You can also check foreign depths, which will add dependencies to your application. So let's say as an example, lbibls-dev, there's a random word there if we run that. And this will not echo, we should just go like that. And it should be foreign dip, not foreign depths. If we were to run that, then now this will be added as a dependency for this application. So now if we go echo foreign depths, and we'll take a look at what foreign dependencies are required to run this application, it will say nothing in this case. Let's maybe just add a foreign dip and then echo for in dip below it. Now, if we were to run this, then here, there's the random package. So they will also show you that you need to use sudo and then you need to put the package manager here. In this case, it can't detect what mine is, install and that. So we can check if they, if we have all the foreign dependencies that we require. If not, we can actually just echo out the foreign dependencies we need. So you put this at the start of your application with how ma many ever dependencies you want to add. And then once you go here, it will just install. It will just give you an output here telling you what you need to install. So if one of my foreign dependencies is MPV, I can put it here and tell them, okay, you need to install MPV in order to use this software. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.